Five years ago, Anders Keaton broke ties with his family for me, and we planned to elope together. Five years later, he came back with a beautiful girlfriend. When we met again, he shook my hand with a smile. We were young and naive back then. Thank you for making me sober. Ding! This novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. The next time I saw Anders was at the company's annual summary meeting. After sitting down in the conference room, a colleague gossiped. The new CEO graduated from Yale, and he's young, only 27. That's impressive. His 27 is a true elite, and my 27 is just a deadbeat, another colleague joked. I was about to speak when I heard footsteps at the door. A man in a sharp suit strode in, surrounded by people, exuding an imposing aura. Linda, who sat next to me, grabbed my arm in excitement and whispered. Oh my god, a real-life CEO. It's like a scene from a drama. He's so handsome I can't close my legs. I smiled and looked up, but my smile froze when I met those obsidian eyes. What do you do when the new boss is your ex-boyfriend whom you dumped? Urgently waiting for answers online. The two-hour meeting felt like sitting on pins and needles, and I was restless as if ants were crawling all over me. Linda was puzzled. Do you have lice? I didn't respond, feeling embarrassed and uneasy. However, Anders Keaton, who sat at the head of the table, didn't look my way even once, as if he didn't know me. He looked calm and composed, seemingly having moved on from that relationship long ago. After work, I hurried to leave to avoid running into Anders. But fate had other plans. As soon as I stepped out of the company, I saw him standing by the street, seemingly waiting for someone. His custom-tailored dark suit made him look tall and imposing, with the bustling city and bright lights as his backdrop. Even just standing there with his hands in his pockets, he looked like a picture. I used my briefcase to cover my face, planning to sneak away quietly. Aaliyah Myers. His voice was distant, as if calling an insignificant person. I stopped and had no choice but to lower my briefcase and look up awkwardly. What a coincidence. Anders chuckled and walked over. What are you hiding from? Nothing. Caught red-handed, I felt a bit embarrassed and made an excuse. It's windy, so I'm blocking it. Anders raised an eyebrow slightly. What, did you think I still couldn't get over you and would pester you? No, no. I laughed dryly, how could that be? You're successful now, a winner in life. I don't match up to you anymore. Anders said nothing, just looked at me. As night fell, the world was divided into clear lines of light and dark. His finely chiseled features were hidden in the shadows, unclear. Just as I was about to find an excuse to leave, a soft female voice came from behind him. Anders. Anders turned around, and following his gaze, I saw a young girl in an LV coat with long, wavy hair cascading over her shoulders. She smiled and ran over to hook her arm through Anders's. Where are we going for dinner later? After a moment, she seemed to notice me for the first time and glanced at me before asking. And who is this? My ex-girlfriend, Anders said casually, the one I told you about before. Oh. The girl gave me a deep look, then extended her fair hand. Hello, I'm Helena, Anders's current girlfriend. She emphasized the word current. She was indeed very beautiful, with glossy hair falling over her chest and a faint scent of high-end perfume. Standing next to Anders, they looked like a perfect match. I glanced at my own dry, split ends, pressed my lips together, and shook her hand. Hello, Aaliyah Myers. Nice to meet you. We have something to do, so we'll be leaving first. Helena hooked her arm through Anders's and was about to leave. Anders lowered his arm and held her hand, looking down at me. Oh, by the way, we'll be colleagues from now on. The past is the past, and I hope it won't affect your work. And thank you. He gave a faint, cold smile, his eyes deep. I was young and naive back then. If it weren't for you sobering me up, I wouldn't have found such a good girlfriend. After getting home, I spent a long time scrolling through the takeout app but couldn't decide what to eat. Even though I was starving in the afternoon, none of the colorful dishes on the screen seemed appealing at this moment. I ended up eating a bowl of instant noodles and went to bed after washing up. These days, with year-end summaries and continuous overtime, I was already exhausted. 
However, even with my eyes closed, I couldn't fall asleep. Anders's face kept appearing in my mind, with a hint of mockery. I hadn't seen him in five years, and he had changed a lot. He had shed that youthful aura, becoming entirely composed, like a natural leader, with even his gaze carrying a sense of oppression. Yet, the image of him pleading with red eyes for me not to leave him still seemed so vivid. At twenty, Anders was far from being this mature. Back then, if I talked a bit more with a male classmate, he would glare at me fiercely. Like a little wolf dog pretending to be fierce. On my 22nd birthday, he bought a 0.3 carat diamond ring and hid it in a chicken wing to propose to me. I almost broke a tooth and angrily hit him. People usually put it in a cake, you put it in a chicken wing, are you crazy? That's too cliché. Anders laughed and dodged, you're so dumb. I still remember in that small apartment, his eyes shimmering. The diamond is a bit small. I originally wanted to save up for a bit longer, but I couldn't wait. I'll get you a bigger one when I make more money. He blushed and awkwardly knelt on one knee, stammering. Aaliyah Myers, I have no money now, will you still marry me? I paused for a long time, hugging him with teary eyes, my heart overflowing with happiness. Thinking back, even though we were poor then, those were the happiest days of my life. We thought it would last forever. But in just five short years, everything has changed. In the following days, I was afraid of running into Anders, considering our breakup wasn't exactly amicable. Yet, I didn't see him even once. It seemed he had truly moved on, treating me as just an ordinary subordinate. One evening, as I was heading home, a message popped up in the college classmates' group chat. I clicked on it absentmindedly and froze. Anders, I'm getting engaged this Friday. You're all invited. Some classmates, unaware of the situation, congratulated him. Congrats, congrats. You and Aaliyah have been together for so many years, it's about time. Anders replied, my fiancé's name is Helena. The group fell silent for a moment, then the messages resumed as if nothing had happened, dispelling the awkwardness. Congratulations. Wishing you a long and happy marriage, and many children. Anders asked those planning to attend to let him know so he could arrange the seating. I didn't respond, assuming he wouldn't specifically invite me. It would be too awkward to have an ex-girlfriend who had such a messy breakup attend such a joyful occasion. But then my phone suddenly rang. I answered, hello? There was silence on the other end, then Anders' deep voice came through. Aaliyah Myers, aren't you coming to my engagement? I hadn't expected him to call me personally. I forced a response, I won't be going. I wish you both a long and happy life together. Anders chuckled lightly, with a hint of an indescribable emotion. Come on, I have to thank you for sobering me up back then. Without you, there wouldn't be the Anders Keaton of today. For some reason, I felt a chill in his voice, as if he was speaking through gritted teeth. I'll save you a seat. You're excused from work that day. Anders's engagement was held in a grand manner, with the most luxurious hotel in the city booked entirely. The surroundings were filled with pink and white roses and balloons, creating a fragrant atmosphere. When I sat down at the table with my classmates, I could clearly feel the strange glances from people around me. This table was full of our university classmates, who had all witnessed the passionate love between Anders and me back then. Now he was getting engaged, but his fiancée wasn't me, which was somewhat dramatic. The venue was beautifully decorated, with countless crystals hanging in the hall, which were said to be airlifted from the Czech Republic. The carpets were covered with shimmering, broken light patterns. It was just short of having wealthy and powerful written all over it. Anders was truly different from before. I thought somewhat bitterly, back then he proposed to me with a 0.3 carat diamond ring. But now, just the decoration of this event could probably buy several carats of diamonds. To the soothing music, Anders brought Helena around to toast. Helena was wearing a silver mermaid dress, the hemline embedded with countless rhinestones, stunningly beautiful. The classmates were very supportive, the bride is so beautiful, Anders, you're really lucky. Yeah, she's even prettier than a celebrity. Where did you find her? Helena's face was as radiant as a peach blossom, no, I am the lucky one. As she spoke, she raised her glass towards me, the pigeon-egg-sized diamond on her hand dazzling. 
She smiled meaningfully, speaking of which, I must thank Aaliyah. If it weren't for you, we might not have ended up together. The hostility in her eyes was too obvious, everyone at the table wasn't blind and exchanged glances, falling silent. I forced a slight smile, not at all, you two are a perfect match. Helena curled her lips. By the second half of the event, I couldn't hold on any longer and got up to leave. As I walked through the corridor, I ran into Anders. He was still wearing his engagement suit, looking incredibly handsome. I tugged at the corner of my mouth. I just remembered something, I need to go. After saying that, I continued to walk forward. But Anders blocked my way, not letting me pass. I stopped, without looking up. After a moment, cool fingers lifted my chin. Anders looked at my reddened eyes and laughed in surprise. Are you crying? Sand got in my eyes. I mumbled an excuse and tried to leave, but he grabbed my wrist. Anders spoke with a tone of vindictive pleasure. Aaliyah, shouldn't you be happy to see me get engaged? Didn't you wish me happiness back then? Why are you crying? Could it be that you regret seeing my success now? I felt embarrassed and humiliated, while he was composed and unhurried, as if our roles had reversed. I looked at Anders and suddenly recalled that scene at the airport five years ago. Back then, he had waited for me at the airport for a long time only to be met by bodyguards brought by his mother. I walked out from the side and stood by his mother's side. Anders had his hands pinned behind his back, looking at me with eyes full of rage. Aaliyah! His mother, wearing sunglasses, took out a checkbook from her pocket, quickly wrote a number, and handed it to me. Anders' eyes turned red instantly. He pleaded with a hoarse voice, Aaliyah, don't take it. How humble he was at that time, kneeling on the ground, his voice choked with sobs. I will earn a lot of money in the future for you, okay? I'm begging you. I beg you, Aaliyah, don't leave me. I looked at him coldly and accepted the check in front of him. We're not suitable, I wish you happiness. And now he was gripping my wrist tightly, his eyes filled with venom. Can a woman like you, who only cares about money, feel sadness? Or is this another one of your tricks, thinking that it will soften my heart? Just when I was almost unable to bear it, Helena suddenly called out from behind him. Anders, we need to go toast our elders. Anders gave me a cold glance, then decisively let go and left. Helena gave me a meaningful look. It seemed to be a warning to stay away from Anders. The two of them walked away hand in hand. When I returned to the company, I saw an unexpected person beside my workstation. Helena was moving her things aside and greeting the colleagues. Nice to meet you, hope we can get along well. I wasn't surprised and continued with my work. She is Anders's girlfriend. It's only natural for her to join the company. It wasn't long before Anders called. Come to my office. I pushed the door open and saw him leaning back in a huge leather chair with his back to me. Mr. Keaton? I spoke softly. Anders slowly turned around, his fingers interlocked, elbows resting on the desk. You're handling Mr. Depp's order, right? Mr. Depp is my biggest client, and he's about to purchase a batch of equipment. We had already negotiated everything, just waiting for the final procedures. Helena just joined and doesn't have any resources. Let her take over this client. He said it nonchalantly. I was stunned and managed to say. Mr. Keaton, I'm about to finalize this contract. If we change people now, Mr. Depp might not agree. Can I switch to another client? Anders sneered, am I the boss or are you the boss? He wouldn't agree? What, have you slept with him or have some other unspeakable relationship with him? Do you really think he can't do without you? His words were as sharp as the sharpest blade, and my face turned pale. But I really needed this contract, I needed the bonus from completing it. I pleaded softly. Mr. Keaton, I really need this order. I have many other high-quality clients. I beg you, please let me keep Mr. Depp. Anders raised an eyebrow, beg me? Aaliyah, I didn't expect you to beg. He stood up, looking down at me with cold eyes. Back then, when I begged you like a dog not to leave, why did you walk away without looking back? His voice was like it was soaked in ice water, so cold that I shivered unconsciously. Seeing the deep hatred in his eyes, 
I finally understood. I should have known long ago that Anders hated me. He was such a proud person, yet he humbled himself so much to beg back then. And I didn't soften at all, discarding him like a stray dog. Now that he has achieved success, it's only natural for him to come back and take revenge. I should have left immediately, but I really couldn't do without that money, rooted to the spot, swaying but still humbly pleading. Anders. But he had already sat down, looking down indifferently. I don't want to hear your nonsense anymore. Get out. After standing for a few seconds, I moved my steps and turned to leave. I didn't intend to cry, but I couldn't help shedding tears in the break room. Anders had no idea how much effort I put into securing this client. Mr. Depp was a very difficult person, and no one wanted to take on this client initially. I followed him for a whole year, almost always on call. When his elderly family member was hospitalized, I stayed by the bedside. When his daughter went to kindergarten, I picked her up and dropped her off, rain or shine. One call from him and I would fly across half the country to his doorstep, waiting all night in the freezing winter just to deliver a document in the morning. The next day, I had a high fever and was hospitalized with pneumonia. Only then did I finally move him to decide to sign the contract with me. This was a client I secured with great difficulty, waiting so long for that bonus of more than $100,000. Or maybe Anders knew and didn't care. Now Helena is his girlfriend, the apple of his eye. What am I to him? I wiped away my tears, looking at my pale face in the mirror. Just an outdated, inferior product. Even though I had anticipated this day, I still felt sad. The Anders who loved me so much back then was truly killed by my own hands. After work, I gave Dr. Carter a call. I pretended to be relaxed, Dr. Carter, there's a problem with that money. I might not be able to gather it for a while. I'll use cheaper medicine for now. Dr. Carter was anxious, what happened? Money is not an issue, I can cover it for you first. I pressed my lips together. It's nothing, I can't have the surgery anytime soon anyway. I'm still doing okay. I'll figure something out myself. After hanging up, I wandered aimlessly along the street. The autumn night had already turned chilly, and people on the street were wrapping their clothes tightly around themselves. The dry yellow leaves on the street were crushed underfoot, making a crackling sound. When I passed by a coffee shop, I turned slightly. This coffee shop was already closed, and the car lights reflected my desolate expression on the glass door. Five years ago, it was here that Anders's mother found me. Under the dim light, she handed me a check. I was just about to speak when she interrupted me. Miss Myers, I don't mean anything else, and I'm not paying you to leave my son. It's just that your current situation really isn't suitable for continuing to be with Anders. This money is to thank you for taking care of my son for so long. I bit my lower lip, Mrs. Keaton, I'm not after your family's money, I truly love Anders. I know. Anders' mother took a sip of her coffee. I'm not the type to break up a couple. In fact, I think Anders has good taste. If it weren't for your condition, I would be happy for him to marry you. My eyes began to sting, and I quickly lowered my head to hide my embarrassed expression. Anders' mother sighed. Miss Myers, don't blame me for being harsh. Your illness can last a long time or a short time, it's really uncertain how long you can live. I'm straightforward, please don't mind but Anders is my son, and I understand him. He's always been very devoted. I remember when he was young, he had a little white cat that he loved very much. But later, that cat secretly went out, got caught in the rain, got sick, and died. He was heartbroken for a long time, didn't eat for three days, and almost ended up in the hospital. Later, I bought him many cats, but do you know what he said to me? She smiled bitterly, he said none of these cats were his cat. Miss Myers, you've been with Anders for so long, you should understand him. If something happens to you in the future, given his feelings for you, he wouldn't be able to live on. As a mother, I can't just watch my son go down that path, so I beg you, please let go. My fingers turned pale as I gripped the coffee cup, my voice hoarse. But I really can't bear to. I love him so much. Anders has become a part of my life. How could I possibly bear to let go? Can you bear to see him die with you after you're gone? Anders' mother closed her eyes. 
He's only 22 years old, he has a long life ahead of him. The wind was strong that day, drying my tears quickly. By the time I got home, my face was a mess. I didn't take Anders' mother's check. I told her I would ask Anders out, and then she could give me the check in front of him. When I went back to work again, I worked even harder than before. All the best clients I have were given to Helena by Anders, so I had to work even harder to close the remaining deals. I started working overtime, staying up late at night to prepare proposals. My health was already poor, and this constant strain quickly took its toll on me, making me look much more haggard. I thought this would satisfy Anders, but he still didn't let up on me. At the company's annual meeting, Anders came to our table. My fingers trembled slightly under the table, but I still had to stand up with the leaders. This year, everyone has done an excellent job. I hope we can continue the good work in the new year. Helena leaned against him, her red dress accentuating her graceful figure and rosy complexion. In contrast, I looked pale and thin. I lowered my head in some embarrassment as Helena elegantly raised her glass. Thank you all for taking care of me these days. I'll drink this toast. Anders was about to drink, but when he saw the tea in my hand, he frowned. Aaliyah, are you disrespecting Helena? The department manager hurriedly explained for me. Aaliyah's health isn't good, she can't drink alcohol, Mr. Keaton. I'll drink this for her. With that, he downed his glass of white wine in one gulp. Mr. Keaton sneered and said contemptuously, Did I speak to you? The department manager turned pale and didn't dare to speak again. Mr. Keaton stared at me intensely. What, my girlfriend isn't worthy of you drinking a glass? I forced a smile, I'm sorry, Mr. Keaton, I really can't drink alcohol, I. He interrupted me, what do you mean, do you have a terminal illness or something? I looked at his grim face and froze. Strangely, I was already very upset before. But for some reason, when he said this, my heart felt as if it was pierced by a thousand arrows, the pain so intense I had to bend over to cope with it. I. My lips trembled, but I couldn't speak. Anders looked at me indifferently, with no emotion in his eyes. If you don't drink, pack your things and leave tomorrow. Aaliyah Myers, you need money, right? You have a choice. Everyone around fell silent, looking at us strangely. Everyone felt Anders's importance to Helena, not willing to compromise even for a glass of wine. He handed the glass of wine to me, and I looked at the full glass of white wine, raising my hand stiffly to take it. A moment later, I raised my head and drank it all in one gulp. The spicy liquor slid down my throat like a knife, choking me, making me cough so hard my face turned red, as if I was about to cough out my lungs. This frail body couldn't withstand such intense stimulation. I felt a sharp pain in my abdomen, as if a hand was tearing at my insides. See, you can drink, why pretend, you didn't. Anders's words stopped abruptly, his eyes widening. The long period of overwork and illness had drained my body, and this glass of white wine became the last straw that broke the camel's back. Aaliyah! In his panicked eyes, my body went limp. Everything went black. I was woken up by the sound of arguing. When I opened my eyes, I saw Helena glaring angrily at Anders. What's so good about a woman who only knows how to worship money? Enough is enough, you've spent too much time on her. Anders responded coldly, Helena, remember what we agreed on. You've crossed the line. I weakly interrupted them, can you take your argument outside? This sentence seemed to stir up a hornet's nest. Helena turned around, glaring at me and gritting her teeth. Since you abandoned him back then, why are you still clinging to him now? Aaliyah Myers, how can you be so shameless? I frowned, how am I clinging to him? Besides, what does it matter to you if I abandoned him or not? Helena's face turned pale, and her voice became sharp. Do you know what Anders has been through these past few years? You abandoned him for a bit of money, and while he was struggling and suffering outside, where were you? His mother died, and he handled the funeral alone. Where were you? He worked himself to the brink of death, almost ending up in the hospital. Where were you? Her eyes reddened, and it was unclear if she was speaking to me or Anders. All these years, I've been the one by his side. How dare you say such things so lightly? Anders' face darkened, enough. 
I have to say it. Helena seemed completely unable to hold back. What's so good about this woman? When she fainted just now, you were so scared, you wanted to rush her to the hospital. How long will it take for you to let her go? Only then did I notice Anders' slightly disheveled clothes and his hair falling loose. Get out! Anders, unable to bear it anymore, pointed to the door and shouted. Helena looked at him, wounded. After a moment, she wiped her eyes messily, covered her mouth, and left. Are you very pleased with yourself? After a moment of silence, Anders suddenly spoke. Aaliyah, are you thinking that Anders is like a dog, no matter how many times you throw him away, he won't leave, even after all this time, he still can't let go of you. He raised his head fiercely, are you very pleased now? However, I just coughed twice and said softly. Anders, I will submit my resignation as soon as I go back. Since we both find each other so unpleasant, let's part ways amicably. Part ways amicably? Anders suddenly erupted in anger, taking a few steps to reach me. His expression was so terrible that I almost suspected that if I weren't lying in a hospital bed, he would have grabbed me by the collar and pulled me up. His eyes were bloodshot, and he roared. You're talking about parting ways amicably? Let me tell you, Aaliyah Myers, there's no way we can part ways amicably. You should have known this day would come when you left me at the airport. Then what do you want? I smiled bitterly. Isn't this enough? Enough? It will never be enough. Anders, in a fit of rage, flung his coat sleeve and stormed out. As he reached the door, Dr. Carter, wearing a white coat, brushed past him and hurried in, frowning. What's going on with you again? How can you drink alcohol with uremia? Last time you almost froze to death, I've told you so many times, you can only do light clerical work, why are you still pushing yourself so hard? Do you have a death wish? She was genuinely angry. I widened my eyes. Anders footsteps abruptly stopped at the door. The air in the ward seemed to stop flowing in that instant. After a moment, he turned around like a malfunctioning doll. He opened his mouth, his face blank. What did you say? Are you Aaliyah boss? Dr. Carter said discontentedly. Aaliyah didn't want to trouble the company, so she didn't mention her illness. But you can't treat people like this. She does her job so well, what does it matter if she drinks or not? Why do you force her to drink? You're killing her, do you know that? Dr. Carter, please stop. I bit my lip. Anders didn't look at her, just stared blankly at me, as if he suddenly didn't recognize me. After Dr. Carter finished scolding and left, he slowly walked in, stood by my bed, and spoke in a dazed voice. When did this happen? I sighed. I didn't expect that after hiding it for so long, it would still come out. But it's okay. Now Anders has a new life and a new girlfriend. Maybe my death won't trouble him too much. I fulfilled the promise I made to Dr. Carter. I forced a smile and looked up at him, before you wanted to elope with me. The atmosphere became thick with silence, and Anders' voice began to tremble. So, that's why you. I shook my head, I'm not that noble. At first, I really wanted to continue being with you. This illness is serious, but if I find a suitable kidney, I might live for decades. Then why did you? I lowered my head and gave a bitter smile, your mother came to see me. Just before you wanted to take me away, she said if I died, you might not be able to live either. I thought she was right. I'm already miserable enough, why drag you down with me? Anders didn't say anything. After a while, I looked up in confusion, only to see his eyes were red. His voice was hoarse, Aaliyah, do you think you're so great? Making it like a TV drama, running away with an illness, thinking you're doing me a favor? I was helpless, then what should I do? What if I die, what will you do? Did you ever think about how I would feel? Anders exploded, shouting hoarsely. Did you ever think about how I've lived these years? I was alone abroad, with you on my mind all the time. I hated you to death. I kept thinking that once I had money, I'd come back to find you, to show you what I've become, to make you regret it. But… His voice gradually lowered, mixed with a sob. But I kept dreaming of you. 
In my dreams, just as I was about to curse you, you smiled at me, and I couldn't say anything. I worked desperately just to come back to you sooner, to tell you, I've made it now. Now you're telling me it was all a lie. He covered his face, unable to speak. I was silent. After a while, I reached out to touch his head, feeling his body trembling slightly. Not as good to touch as before, I thought. Anders never used to use hair gel. It's okay now. I smiled, you already have your own life and a new lover. Anders, you're doing well, keep looking forward. Anders looked up and glared at me fiercely, but his red eyes weren't scary, just a little pitiful. Stop talking nonsense. He swore, clearly holding a lot of resentment towards me. Helena was someone I found to make you jealous, we have nothing between us. After saying that, he turned his head away in a huff, probably thinking it was too embarrassing to admit. I was stunned, feeling a pang of sourness in my heart. So he didn't have a new girlfriend. So, like me, he hadn't let go of us either. I hesitated, but she seemed to care about you a lot. Anders said sullenly, that's her business. I told her from the start, I was just using her to make you jealous, to show you that I had moved on and was doing great. Aaliyah Meyer's family, where are you? A nurse called out at the door. Anders stood up abruptly, here. Then he hurried out. I thought for a moment, pulled back the covers, got out of bed, and slowly followed him. Anders was led to the doctor's office by a nurse. Dr. Carter frowned, aren't you Aaliyah's boss? Anders explained somewhat awkwardly, I'm her boyfriend. Where did Aaliyah get a boyfriend? Dr. Carter was suspicious, she only had a boyfriend a few years ago, but they broke up. I am that ex-boyfriend. Dr. Carter sighed, Aaliyah mentioned you to me. At that time, her condition was quite serious, and she was afraid of holding you back, so she broke up with you. That day, she said you had a new girlfriend and were doing well. She seemed quite happy about it. So why are you back now? Anders was stunned. After a few seconds, he lowered his head. It's all a misunderstanding. I don't have a new girlfriend. Dr. Carter didn't want to talk more about this, her face turning serious. Aaliyah's condition has been getting worse recently. With her health, she really needs to rest well. But you know she's an orphan and has no family support. Over the years, she's been working herself to the bone to pay for dialysis and other medical expenses. Otherwise, her health wouldn't be this bad. I just did a checkup on her, she rubbed her face and said sadly. If we can't find a suitable kidney donor soon, she probably won't last much longer. I heard the sentence from the doorway and was stunned for a moment, surprisingly not feeling too sad. I just felt a sense of relief, like I was finally going to be freed. Life hasn't been a happy experience for me. I was abandoned by my parents as a child and grew up in an orphanage. The orphanage didn't mistreat us, but the staff certainly didn't care for us like parents would. I had poor health since childhood and no one took me for checkups or treatments. I just muddled through growing up. No one has ever loved me. And I have never loved anyone. Until I met Anders. The years I was with Anders were the happiest days of my life. For the past five years, I have been holding on bit by bit with those memories. Thinking about it now, having him accompany me on my final journey makes even death seem less frightening. The two people in the room said something else, but I was distracted and didn't hear clearly. After a while, I heard Anders' footsteps and quickly hit around the corner of the corridor. He didn't return to the ward but stopped against the wall of the corridor. It was already late at night, the ward was very quiet, and the sensor lights in the corridor dimmed. Anders was completely shrouded in shadow, looking like a bowstring about to snap. After a moment, he slowly slid down the wall, crouched down, and covered his face. I heard his suppressed sobs, hoarse and desperate. Like a dying animal. I leaned against the wall, letting my tears flow down my cheeks. On this night, in the same corridor, we both cried, but couldn't comfort each other. Anders accepted my resignation. He covered all my medical expenses and stopped going to work every day, staying by my side instead. I teased him, don't you care about your company anymore? He handed me a peeled apple and glared at me. Hey, what have you been doing all these years? I curiously leaned on the headboard. Anders thought for a moment. 
Back then, all I could think about was getting revenge on you, a gold digger, and taking over my family's company as soon as possible. I first went abroad for a master's degree, but then my mom. I took over the company right after graduation and have been busy with work ever since. He spoke lightly, but I could imagine how much pressure Anders must have felt in his twenties. Dealing with our breakup and the sudden death of a close family member, carrying such a heavy burden. How hard it must have been far beyond what a few words can convey. I forced a smile, why don't you ask me what I've been doing all these years? Anders paused, his eyes shadowed by his tousled hair. I don't want to know, he said softly after a moment. I'm afraid it will make me sad. I should have been there with you all these years, but you had to face everything alone, even earning money for your medical bills while being sick. His knuckles turned white, I even stole your clients, forced you to drink, and flaunted other women in front of you. Anders looked extremely upset, as if he was about to cry any second. I pressed my lips together and held his hand. It's all in the past now. It felt like the five years that had passed were frozen between us. Even though Anders and I hadn't seen each other for so long, being together again felt just like before, as if we had never been apart. I confidently reached out to him. Didn't you say you'd buy me a big diamond ring when you made money? Where's my ring? Anders rolled his eyes at me, you look like a big diamond ring. Despite his words, he went out that afternoon. When he came back, he brought a bag of KFC. I tore open the paper bag and found only a box of chicken wings inside. I scolded him, are you crazy? Playing this trick again? But then he knelt on one knee in front of me and took out a small blue velvet box from his pocket. When he opened it, there was a sparkling big diamond ring inside. I couldn't tell how many carats it was, but its brilliance seemed to say, I'm very expensive. Anders's face turned slightly red, looking a bit embarrassed. I didn't know what kind you liked, so I just bought the biggest one. Get well soon so you can pick one yourself. I wanted to laugh, but my eyes couldn't help but heat up. I extended my hand, and Anders slipped the ring onto my finger. He whispered, Aaliyah Myers, will you marry me? I wiped away my tears, yes. My health is getting worse and worse. If I had taken better care of myself, it wouldn't have deteriorated so quickly. I blame myself for being foolish. After leaving the airport, I tore up that check while crying. At the time, I thought it was money for selling Anders and my feelings. I didn't want to spend it. But now that I think about it, if I had known Anders would come back to find me, I might have used that money for medical bills. Maybe I could have spent more time with him. I started to undergo frequent dialysis and even fell into comas without warning. At first, I would wake up quickly, but then the periods grew longer. I couldn't eat and had to rely on a feeding tube, and my body rapidly wasted away. When I was conscious, I asked Anders to bring me a mirror. The woman in the mirror had a pale face, and the once plump cheeks had vanished, leaving only bones covered by a thin layer of skin. So ugly. I complained. Anders actually nodded, a bit, much worse than before. I got angry. Do you even realize what you're saying? He continued, so get better soon. If you keep looking this ugly, I might really stop liking you. We both knew he was joking. But neither of us could laugh. Fate was generous, giving us one last moment together. Yet it was also cruel, as a brief tenderness was followed by a permanent farewell. Time seemed perfectly calculated, just enough for us to clear up misunderstandings and reconcile. And then it was time to say goodbye. Every day for me could be the last. I cherished every day like it was the end, seizing every moment to be with Anders. But he seemed to be getting busier lately. He used to take care of me himself, but now he had hired a caregiver and often disappeared. Several times when I woke up from a coma, the room was empty, with only the sunset's afterglow making the quiet evening even more desolate. I started to wonder if it was really because I had become ugly, and he no longer liked me and didn't want to stay with me. But every time he came back, his attitude didn't change. He still lay beside me, telling me stories to lull me to sleep. When I was awake, I sometimes asked him, what will you do if I die? Anders was very unhappy, what nonsense are you talking about? I pushed him, just tell me. I will forget you immediately and then find a wife to marry, he said irritably. 
I got angry and reached out to pinch his face, you dog of a man, I really misjudged you. So, you, his voice suddenly became forlorn, try not to die. I was silent for a moment, then withdrew my hand. After a while, I lowered my head and forced a smile. All right, I'll allow you to find a girlfriend after I die. But not too soon. Days passed, and soon I no longer had the energy to care about these things. Because Dr. Carter suddenly burst in, her eyes full of joy, a kidney. She panted, there's a suitable kidney. I was shocked and started trembling uncontrollably, my mind exploding with joy. I had waited for a suitable kidney for so many years, and now it was finally here. This meant I could continue living. I could continue being with Anders. Where did the kidney come from? I took a deep breath, trying to calm my excitement. Didn't they always say there wasn't one? Dr. Carter's face showed a trace of unnaturalness but quickly concealed it. It just came, and you happened to be next in line. I didn't think much of it. After she left, I cried and laughed, hugging Anders, who had just come back, and sobbing uncontrollably. I have a kidney, I can live now. Anders, I can live. Anders was silent for a moment, then a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth where I couldn't see. He stroked my hair, his voice gentle. Yes, it's wonderful. You can live. Because my health condition couldn't be delayed any longer, the surgery was scheduled urgently. The next day, I was wheeled into the operating room. Anesthesia flowed into my body, moving up my arm, and within seconds, I lost consciousness. The following time felt like I had disappeared from the world, no dreams, no sensations. When I opened my eyes again, I was in the recovery room. As I was wheeled out, I thought Anders would surely be there waiting for me, but he was nowhere to be found, and he hadn't come back. I asked Dr. Carter, where is Anders? Dr. Carter was taken aback, then casually replied. I don't know. I think I heard him say he had some work to do at the company, so he probably went back. I was a bit upset, what kind of person thinks about work at a time like this? Dr. Carter, who never really liked Anders, spoke up for him for the first time. He doesn't have it easy, managing such a big company and still needing to take care of you. Don't blame him. Despite her words, Anders didn't show up the next day. Nor the third day, the fifth day, or the seventh day. It was as if Anders had suddenly vanished. I bit my lip tasting a hint of blood. When I called him, Anders' voice sounded a bit tired, but he still patiently comforted me. The company has an urgent bid, and I need to go out of town. I'm sorry for these days. If you need anything, just tell the nurse or Dr. Carter. I'll be back in a few days. I hung up the phone silently and shakily sat up. The nurse anxiously said, slow down. The doctor said you can only get out of bed and walk slowly now. Don't rush. I held her hand, moving step by step down the corridor, dialing the phone. Two seconds later, a faint ringtone echoed from the far end of the corridor. I walked over and stopped at the door. Anders's voice came from inside, faintly, I told you I'd be back in a few days. Why are you so clingy? I didn't speak, and tears immediately fell. Hello? Hello? Why aren't you talking? With trembling hands, I pushed open the door to the room. In the disinfectant-scented room, Anders was lying on the bed, holding his phone, wearing a hospital gown, within four drip above his head. Seeing me come in, he was stunned. Then he quickly explained, I didn't mean to lie to you. A few days ago, my appendix acted up, and I didn't want you to worry. I interrupted him, crying, where did the kidney come from? Is it, is it? I couldn't continue, choking up. Is it your kidney? Anders paused for a moment, then finally smiled helplessly. Why are you crying? I couldn't hold back anymore and burst into tears. You're crazy. Do you know what it means to lose a kidney? Why would you be so stupid? I know, Anders said nonchalantly. I might not be able to do heavy work in the future, but I have plenty of money, so I don't need to do heavy work anyway. I cried incoherently, you're talking nonsense. Don't cry, Anders coaxed. It's just a kidney. It's not like I lost both. I still have one left. It's fine. 
We were meant to be together, even our kidneys are a pair. But what about you in the future? You were perfectly fine. I trembled as I touched his bloodless face. Anders didn't care. Everything else is fine. It's just that now I only have one kidney. If I go out to find a wife, no one will want me, so you'll have to take responsibility. I was heartbroken, you still have the mood to joke. But he laughed, holding my hand. Maybe it was fate that brought me to you. I went to try, without any hope. I didn't expect such a small chance to match, like winning the lottery. The midday sunlight fell into Anders's eyes, reflecting an amber glow, full of laughter. Aaliyah, you don't know how happy I am. Saving you, there's nothing better in this world. Anders and I were discharged from the hospital on the same day. The first thing he wanted to do after being discharged was to drag me to buy a diamond ring. I pulled him back, I only have one finger to wear a ring on, why buy so many? Anders frowned, it's Valentine's Day today. Can't you be a bit more romantic? Come on, let me take you to buy one you like. This time, you have to pick it yourself. It suddenly dawned on me, it was already Valentine's Day. I haven't bought you a gift for so many years, Anders held my hand and rambled on. I'll make it up to you this time. On the winter streets, probably because of Valentine's Day, there were many young couples walking together, all with smiles on their faces. Around us, there were vendors selling bright red roses. The lights from the traffic and the surrounding neon signs intertwined, adding a touch of romance to the night. Suddenly, a cold wind blew past, and my face felt a chill. Looking up, I saw countless snowflakes falling from the sky, turned golden by the surrounding streetlights. I reached out and caught a snowflake. You've already given me a gift, I said with a smile. Anders was puzzled, what gift? I didn't say anything. In my heart, I silently said, thank you for giving me a new life. From now on, we can finally lean on each other. No longer walking alone.